Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Tom Bogomi and today we are back for another Pokemon plushie tutorial. Today we are doing a Executor. I was about to say Executcute, but that would be the non-evolved version of this character. So of course this is a really rare character and also an extremely strong one in the Pokemon series. I know a lot of you guys in Pokemon Go use him in the gyms. So the blocks you're going to need to build this are the following. You'll need spruce planks, brown wool, dark oak planks, smooth sandstone, pink stained clay, snow, sea lantern, lime stained clay, spruce wood stairs, quartz stairs, sandstone stairs, spruce wood slabs, sandstone slabs, and then the wither and skeleton skulls. Now, if you're on PC and you're playing on the server, there is every chance they have got the plug-in, which means you can get different colored skulls. If you're on that, then feel free to grab a black skull and a white skull, we're going to use these as alternatives, they don't look anywhere near as good, but it's like pretty much the only alternative we can use, apart from completely replacing them, and I'll talk about that later on if you want to. So, I'll let you pause here and grab them blocks into your inventory, that'll be great if you do, and I want to give credit where credit is due to the designer of this plushie, which was the Diamond555, he's been designing a ton of the Pokemon plushies on the Frosted Network server, so I'll leave all his information down in the description down below, Check him out, show him some support, and again, if you want to check out the Frosted Network server, the IP is frostednetwork.mcpro.co. That is a Minecraft 1.8 PC server with creative, towny, prison, minigames, you name it, we have it. It's a really cool server, so if you want to check it out, that's a good place to go. Anyways, let's begin building. So, we're going to start off with the body, of course. The body is a 6 tall by 6 wide area. I'm going to start off by finding a nice empty space and placing 6 Spruce woods, um, I was about to say planks, slabs in a row. Um, no, it is, it is, I'm getting confused, it is planks. So the next two layers on top of that we're going to place is six spruce planks. Then what we're going to do is on the left side we're going to build up one and two and punch out the middle one. So we now have a floating block. So to recap, it's three blocks tall, six blocks wide, and then we have a gap. And then we have one floaty block. From floaty block, we're going to go five blocks to the right. And then we're going to do another layer of six um, spruce planks on top of it. And once you've done that, if you ignore that there's a gap in the middle, that will be a six by six square. Now, you may be asking, why is there a gap in the middle? And that is indeed a good question. What we're going to do is come to the side and we're going to place one brown wall. And essentially, what we're going to be doing is indenting. So there's not going to be a gap, but there will be a indentation. So the way we do this is we now come around to the rear side and bring it back one using one brown wall. Punch out the original, and you should have a brown wall, which is set one block backwards from the front side. From this, we're going to go one to right using brown wall, two dark oak planks, and two brown wall, and it will look something like this. However, that gap is too big. So what we're going to do is on top of the lower half, we're going to place a row of half slabs, and you'll see now it's only a half block gap, and that's kind of to represent, you know on a palm tree, how they have lots of the, I, I forgot the technical term for them, but lots of lines where it's the different sections. That's essentially what that is representing. So, that is the front side of the plushie complete. It's as simple as that. That is a 6x6 six six square, 6 tall, 6 wide, and if you want to pause, you are more than welcome to do so. Again, this is comprised of three layers of spruce planks with a layer of half slabs, half a block gap, and then two layers of spruce planks. Okay, so on the basis you have this, we can now move on. So we're going to come to the bottom left corner and round to the left side. From here, we're going to expand one, two, three to the left using spruce planks, and you should have something which looks like this. Now the left side is six tall and four wide. What we're going to do is on the left side, we're going to build up one, two using spruce planks, then, right next is brown wool, we're going to place one brown wool and it caps it off. And we have a 2x2 two two area which we can now fill with spruce planks. On top of this, what we're going to do is go straight to the right side and we're going to go 1, 2, 3 to the left. And same for the second layer, 1, 2, 3. And it will give you something which looks like this. Now, just like we did at the front side, we don't want a full block gap. So we're going to place a half slab right there. And it should give you a corner shape which looks like this, which again is 6 tall for wide. And follows very much the same ruling as the front side in terms of the brown wall and then the gap. So from a side angle, again, this is what it looks like. And the good news is the right side is the exact same. So if you want to pause here, 
or skip ahead, you are again more than welcome to do so. Anyways, I am going to go through this side just in case you want me to. So what we do is we come to the right side, we go 1, 2, 3 to the right, and on top of the right side we go up once and twice. To this we then go up diagonal using one brown wall, it will give you a 2x2 two two area, just simply fill that in with spruce planks. And for the final section go to the top left corner, just expand 3 blocks, and same for the second row, and it will look like this. Again the final addition we're going to do is on top of this plank here, add one slab, and that will make the gap slightly less um, noticeable, but also slightly smaller. Okay, so that brings us now to the final side of the body, which is the rear side. What we're going to do for the rear side is the exact same as the front side. However, we already have the left row and the right row complete, which means we're only placing four blocks per row, and it's essentially going to link left side to right side. So just like the first side, the first three layers is four spruce planks. On top of this, we're going to do a layer of half slabs. We're then going to join the two top rows together by placing four spruce planks in between. As you can see, it will currently look like this, and there will be a gap in the middle. So what we're going to do is extend this brown wall backwards one, and same with the two dark oak planks and one brown wall. So the same pattern should be on the rear side of two brown, two dark oak, and two brown. Once you've done that, again, exact same as the front side. Final touch is go ahead and fill the top in using spruce planks. It doesn't really matter if you do or you don't. I just like doing it for completion purposes. But you're not going to see it anyways, it's going to be covered up by one of the heads. I specify one of the heads. Okie dokie. So again, on the bases you have the body looking something like this. I'll do a little spin around. Again, the front side and the rear side are the exact same. Both are 6x6, six six, same design, same pattern. And then the left and right side, again, same as each other, 6 tall, 4 wide. So once we've done that, we can now move on to the limbs, which is the arms and the legs. Now there's not really any arms in this case because the room that the arms will be in is taken up by two extra heads, but we'll discuss that later on in the video. For now, what we're going to do is choose the front side. So in this case, I'm going to use this as my front side, and we're going to come to the bottom left corner and place two spruce planks. We're then going to leave a two block gap and place two spruce planks on the right side. And in front of this, we're going to place two smooth sandstone on each one. So you should now have a 2x2 two two square on the left and a 2x2 two two square on the right. What we're then going to do is on top of each one, we're going to place a 2x2 two two square of spruce planks. So it's now two 2x2x2 two by two by two cubes, and that is left foot, right foot. This is where the skulls come in, and again, this is optional. If you saw in the thumbnail, this was done on PC, so the skulls look a lot better on PC. What you're going to do is on front of each spruce plank, you're going to place a skull. Now again, the face is a bit off-putting, which is why I say it looks a lot better on PC, where you can get rid of the face, but... As you can see, it kind of just acts as nails, claws, whatever you want to call it. Personally, again, if you don't have access to the skulls, I would just ignore that. It doesn't look the best, but we'll discuss the with skull later on because that is kind of necessary. Okay, so again, if you want to pause here, you're more than welcome to do so. And then we're going to move on. So what we're going to be moving on to now is the technical, technically the arms. Um, however, it's not really arms, it's heads. So we come to the left side first, and right in front of this brown wall here, we're going to place two spruce wood stairs upside down facing towards the left side. On top of that, we're going to place two spruce planks. And then what we're going to do, this is where we're going to need our spruce um, planks or slabs. I keep on getting them confused. I don't know what that is. We're going to bring it out one to the left, and again, it's too thick using our spruce slabs. So just to recap, in front of the brown wall, we place two stairs. On top of that, we place two planks. And into the left of that, we place two slabs. And that is the left side. We then head around to the right side and do the exact same. So in front of the brown wall, we place two stairs facing towards the right. On top of that, we place two planks. And then we place two slabs going towards the right. And it will give you something which looks like this. And essentially, we're going to put a head there and a head right there. But as I said, we're going to worry about that later. Because for now, we've got to add the main head. So the way we're going to be doing this is by getting our smooth sandstone, come to the top left corner of the body, place a smooth sandstone and bring it one forwards. From here we're going to go one, two, three, four, five to the right and then link back one inwards just to recap, to uh, reconnect should I say to the body. What we're then going to do is come around to the sides and expand one, two, three, four to the left and same on this side, one, two, three, four, link together and that will give you a six by six square as you can see 
right there. Go ahead and fill all this area in if you want to. I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. You don't need to. But as you can see, that is a 6x6 six six of smooth sandstone. From here, we can build the front side, the left side, right side, and rear side of the head. So we're going to start off at the front side, aka the face. So the first layer is simply 6 smooth sandstone. The second layer is 1 smooth sandstone. We're going to leave a 4 block gap for now and 1 smooth sandstone. The third layer, we're going to place 2 snow, 2 smooth sandstone, and 2 snow. And then the fourth and fifth layer, we're going to place 6 smooth sandstone. Now, like I said, normally the head is a 6x6x6 six by six by six cube. This is the exception. And the reason behind that is, again, because of the leaves that are going to be coming off the top of the head. So for now, it's going to be 5 tall, and it should currently be looking something like this. A bit dead, I guess you could say, because it's got like blank eyes and no mouth. So what we're going to do to make it look a bit more alive is we're going to come around to the rear side of the mouth and this row behind the mouth, so not the row of sandstone underneath the mouth, the row behind it, we're going to punch out four sandstone and place four pink stained clay. What we're then going to do is pretending that, again, this is the mouth, behind the pink, uh, pink clay, this row here of smooth sandstone, we're going to place a row of pink clay right there. What we're then going to do is grab ourselves our quartz stairs and on the left side of the mouth and the right side, we're going to place a upside down quartz stair. On the left side, it's going to be facing towards the right. On the right, it's going to be facing towards the left. As you can see, that will give you something that looks a bit more like a mouth, but there will be a two block gap here. What we're going to do for that is come around to the rear side and simply on top by these two smooth sandstone, we're going to place two sea lanterns. Now, you may be asking why sea lanterns. It just makes it so a bit more light comes out of his mouth and gives an extra light source again for his mouth. So that is the mouth. What we're then going to do is get our sandstone slabs and on the upper half of the mouth, we're going to place a row of four sandstone slabs. As you can see, once you've done that, it makes the mouth a bit darker. So if you took the lights out, it'd be like pitch black right now. So that's why we added the lights just to have a bit more light in there. Okay, so in terms of his eyes, again, if you're on a PC, use black skulls. We're going to be using our wither skulls. Looks a bit weird with the texture. If you want to change it up, then you can simply... Grab yourself some black wool. Alternatively, grab yourself a banner, a black banner, and you can play around with that. I'm not sure if they made it so you can get solo banners on uh, Xbox here. I know on PC, again, you can make single banners rather than double banners. Uh, but alternatively, the best is probably just to get some black wool and place black wool on either side like that. Again, I'm going to keep it just like this for now because on PC, it does look a lot better with the skulls. Okay, so that is the front side of the head. If you want to pause, you're more than welcome to do so. And we're then going to move on to the other sides. So for the other sides, we're going to come around, of course, to the left side first. Each side is a 5 tall by 6 wide area of smooth sandstone. So it's just a simple case of building up to the same height. And we're going to do this all the way around. Again, it's 5 tall and 6 wide. Same for the rear side. The uh, rear side is 5 tall, 6 wide. And then the right side, again, is 5 tall and 6 wide. So all we're doing is essentially following the perimeter of what we built earlier, building up 4 blocks each time, and then you can go ahead and fill the top of the head in using your smooth sandstone. It will give you a nice flat surface to work with. So right now it should be looking a tad goofy. What we're going to do, just to make him look a tad more, I guess, uh, again, emotional, or have a bit more emotion, we're going to be adding some eyebrows. So I guess this is technically... Part of the front side but i'm going to class it as a 3d effect what we're going to do is above each eye we're going to place a smooth sandstone and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the left and then down one using slabs and on the right we go to the right and down one using slabs so on the lower half of the block and then on the upper half of the block below and it will give you something that looks like this again if you're using skulls it will look slightly better and it will look like this again the skulls don't look the best on xbox but on plat other platforms they do look pretty good okay so again that's what it looks like so far and we can now move on to the top side aka the leafs area so what we're going to do is start off by coming to the front left corner and going forwards one we're going to place one slab essentially we're going to do this in each corner so we go forwards one from each corner and you do it from both directions so as you can see what i'm essentially doing is capping off each corner and it will give you something that looks like this there's eight slabs in total. 
in this area, we're then going to start placing some green stained clay. And we're going to start off by layering. So, well, I say green, it's lime, but it looks green. What we're going to do is in between each slab, we're going to place two lime stained clay, which looks something like this. And in this middle area, which should be a 4x4 four four square, we're going to place two layers of 4x4. Four four. So it's essentially too tall, and again, fills this 4x4 four four area. And this is step number one. So half of step number one, in between each slab, place two lime stained clay. And then step number two, or part two of part one, is a two tall by four by four area of lime stained clay in the middle. Again, it's starting to look a bit more like executor as we speak. Step number two, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call it step number two, is from each part, as we just placed here, in between the slabs, we're gonna build up two blocks. So two blocks on each one, one, two, one, two. Same on this one, one, two, one, two, and one, two, one, two. So that's part two. Then what we're going to do is bring it out. So I'm going to start on the left side. So we come to the second block up, not the first block, the second one. We go one to left and then up one, two. Same on this side, second block up. Go one out, up two. And we do this for every one. So we come to the second block, bring it forwards one, and then up two blocks. Round to this side, again, second block, out one, up two blocks. And the final side, second block, out one, up two blocks. And essentially... It'll give you something which looks like this a center pillar and then surrounding it four separate leaves we're then going to go to the middle part and place a two by two of lime stained clay right in the middle and then we're going to go to the final part of the leaves which is the corner parts so the way we're going to do this is we're going to come to each corner and we're going to go diagonal outwards so one block diagonal outwards and up same for the other side so we go diagonal up and the next side we go diagonal and then up and the final side diagonal and up so that's i guess half of the final step what we're then going to do is to each corner we're going to do the exact same again so we go diagonal from that point there and up now we're not punching out the original blocks we want to have them connected so we're going to do this again in each corner we go diagonal up same with this corner diagonal and up and the final corner we go diagonal and up and it looks in total like this it's a bit crazy but it looks really really cool and again i'll fly around a little bit just to give you guys opportunity to pause if you want to again it's a bit crazy but it is pretty easy and pretty self-explanatory once you've done that it's pretty much clean sailing now we've just got the other two heads to add but they are very very simple so we're going to start off now with the left head. So we come over to the left side and on this platform here, it's a two by two. On top of this, we're going to place a two by two of sandstone and then we're going to bring it forwards and backwards. So it's now a four by two area. We're then going to go one, two to left on all the way across and essentially turn it into a four by four platform. So again, you have the two by two here, you bring it forwards, backwards, and then extend it to the left twice and you get a four by four platform. What we're going to do is turn this into a 4x4x4 four by four by four cube. So the first layer is simply 4 smooth sandstone. The second layer we're going to place 1 smooth sandstone, leave the rest empty. The third layer we're going to place 1 snow, 2 smooth sandstone and 1 snow. And we're going to go ahead and punch out the block on the second layer. The fourth layer, which is the final, we're going to place 4 smooth sandstone. And it will look something like this. Again, a bit dead. We're going to grab ourselves our sandstone stairs and underneath each of the snow we're going to place an upside down stair on the left side facing towards the right on the right facing towards the left. In between them we're going to place two slabs on the upper half and again that's our mouth region. We're going to come around to the rear side and in between the two slabs or behind the two slabs should I say we're going to place two pink stained clay. So as you can see there's the pink stained clay and then behind each of the sandstone we're going to place a quartz block which i haven't actually grabbed you could use a quartz there personally i prefer a quartz block as you can see once you've done that it will look like this and that is the front side complete for the eyes again just use a wither skeleton skull if you're not a fan of that then just use black wool but it will look a bit blocky so in this case i'm going to say that the wither skulls will look a tad better Coming around to the other side of this skull now, essentially all we're going to do is just turn it into a 4x4x4 four by four by four cube. So we just build it up until each side is 4x4. Four four. So as you can see, this is now the left side. 
And the rear side, again, just three blocks per layer. Fill in the top using smooth sandstone. And that is now a 4x4x4 cube. The final small additions we're going to be doing is adding some eyebrows and a little 3D effect. So in between each eye, we're going to place two smooth sandstone. So bringing it forwards a layer. And on top of that, we're going to do a layer of four sandstone slabs. In front of each eye now, we're going to do a sandstone slab. So essentially, if you've done the skulls, just place it on the upper half of the skull and it will place two blocks forwards like that. Now, again, that's another reason why these skulls are better to use than just using solid blocks. It's because otherwise you're going to have a bit of an issue there because it's going to be like an empty block and it'll look a bit off. But essentially, that is the left one complete. I'm not sure why there is a lighting glitch there. And that scrolls a bit darker. Again, Xbox being a bit mm. But if you're on PC or other platforms, it should be perfectly fine. So for the right head now, which is of course the final head, it's very much similar. We go over to the left side, or sorry, the right side. And on top of this area, we place a 2x2 two two of smooth sandstone. Bring it forwards and backwards one block. And then two blocks to the right. So we have, again, a 4x4 four four platform. For the front side... We're going to start off by the first layer, punching out the first two blocks in the middle, so the second and third block, and place two of the sandstone slabs on the lower half. For the second layer, we're going to place one smooth sandstone. We're then going to have a quartz stair upside down, forcing towards the right side, and also a quartz stair facing towards the left side on the third block, and then one smooth sandstone. For the next layer now, we're going to place one snow, two smooth sandstone and one snow and for the final layer we're going to simply place four smooth sandstone behind this block here so on top of the two smooth sandstone in the middle we're going to place our two pink stained clay and it will give you something that looks like this and again for each eye simply just place a wither skull on top of each snow so wither skull on the left wither skull on the right and again it will look a bit angry but then just like the other side going to go around the edges and fill it all in using our smooth sandstone so very very simple just go around each side fill it in until you get a four by four on each side same with the top side and then the final addition we're going to add which is again a little 3d effect we're going to grab our smooth our sandstone slabs and on the upper half of each of the quartz stairs we're going to place two sandstone slabs now as you can see that causes a lighting glitch and that again being xbox being a bit funny the way you could alternatively fix that is by placing two sandstone slabs underneath. And that still won't refix it, but um, it will make it look a bit better rather than having just a random bit of black there. So again, apologies if you are building it on console. There is a few small issues you get along the way just because the coding is a bit weird compared to PC. Um, but again, it doesn't look too bad. Once you've done that, that is pretty much the build complete. If you want to add eyebrows to the side, feel free. Again, it's the same logic, just by adding two sandstone slabs in front of each one. But anyways, that is it. That is the tutorial complete. Once you've done that, that is it all done. And I really do hope you enjoyed. Again, it's one of those builds that it turns out better if you're on some platforms. But in general, it's just a really cool build. And I like it a lot. One thing to point out is, again, if you are going to use the skulls, use them for the main eyes on the main character as well. That would be great. And for some reason, my Xbox is froze. Hey ho, it's probably a sign that I shouldn't criticize the game whilst playing it. It's, it's just freezing. Okay, whatever. But that is it. As you can see, that is the tutorial complete. Really do hope you enjoyed. If you did, definitely consider leaving a like down on the video below. And if you haven't already, definitely consider subscribing and sticking around for the next few videos. Again, leave your comments down below saying which ones you want to see in the future, which characters, and I'll try and get around to building them. But apart from that, really do hope you enjoyed. Again, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, my name has been Tom Goey, and goodbye. Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night. I raise my hand to the fire. But it's no use Cause you can't stop it from shining through It's true Baby, let the light shine through If you believe it's true Baby, won't you let the light shine through For you